<laughs> really mean. They can be three to four times the size, but um, the, the generally, on average, especially out in the desert, they're about the same size as a domestic cat. So most of the cats you find out there are the same size as a domestic cat. But when they put GoPros on domestic cats, they found that even a domestic cat that's getting food is killing between 10 and 50 animals a night. So the feral cats would be doing that to get what they need to eat, so they'd be doing even more. Yeah. Um, but the problem is feral cats, 95% of the mainland of Australia has feral cats. So unless you go out to the really, really remote parts of the Simpson Desert, there's cats. Um, and there's at least one cat that has a territory there. Every time it rains, that's when all these animals would have their boom time. The cats and foxes can travel out further following the water because what they need is the water. And so every time it rains, the cats start eating the mice and things and they get out into the desert areas. And so these that take a little bit longer to breed, um, and even though they have fast breeding times, they still take a little bit longer than uh, the mice to breed. And then suddenly they're the next prey item once the mice boom goes down. So uh, Mala has a pregnancy of 28 days. It's pretty cool. Uh, they can produce three young per year, so about every four months they'll have uh, another one come out, so one at a time. And they can breed continuously. At six months old, they're themselves um, mature, so the first daughter could be having a kid at the same time as mom's having a sister before, so a grandkid and another kid at the same time. So they're, they're pretty fast breeders. But still not fast enough. Uh, Bilby, who's hiding in that burrow, so keep your eye on this stage for later. Um, the Bilbies are bandicoot, and so they have that placenta, so they can breed even faster. So they can have up to three young at a time, and um, they can breed, uh, their pregnancy is 14 days, so half the time. But when they come out at the same size, So they breed a lot of areas with dingoes. Because again, dingoes will kill the cats and foxes. That's a tawny frog now. That one as well. I don't like to leave red lights on the birds because they can't fire or anything. And around Uluru, you can still see plenty of spinifex hopping mice um, around the tables there. And again, they don't go into houses. So these are not the ones that are a problem for restaurants or anything like that. They're a cute one to have around. Their urine is basically like sticky paste. Pretty amazing little creatures. These are the ultimate desert survivors. And uh, because they're um, used to being hunted by things like wolves, these are the small wolves. These are actually extinct in the wild. So Mala went extinct in 1992. The last population disappeared from the wild. Uh, there was two populations in the Janine. And one of those two populations disappeared um, because of a large wildfire that went through the area. The other population disappeared due to a single fox getting into their territory. And that was in 1992. Luckily, we realized they were disappearing, so, and they were disappearing just like slowly because of the change in the fire regime. Uh, these are one of the animals that really depended on that patchwork burning because they only eat plants. So they need it all in nice green growth. So when they started disappearing in the 1980s, um, we started collecting them between 1987 